This morning on the church Facebook page, uh, Edwin and Karen have posted a picture I've never seen before by Vincent van Gogh of the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now, it's a little while since I've shared any videos, but one of the reasons I do it is to encourage people in the congregation and beyond to follow our congregational Bible readings, which I have been doing faithfully since Christmas. And this morning's reading was indeed the parable of the Good Samaritan, which you find in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. So just to share something with you for your uh, spiritual upbuilding and uh, to not be outdone by Vincent van Gogh with his uh, picture, I'm going to paint a word picture and help us to think about this story that Jesus told. So I'm simply going to read for you, with a few additional comments, the notes I made when I read the passage this morning. This is the story that tells us that finding eternal life involves an act, a life of loving service and action. That is not just head belief or religious ritual. Loving our neighbour is an integral expression of faith. Faith without works is dead. So we can't love God if we don't love our neighbour. These two cannot be separated. Now the priest and the Levite in the story who look and then pass by on the other side are there to tell us that religious uh, ritual, religious position and faithful belief of uh, divine uh, truth are not in themselves sufficient to bring us to eternal life. There has to be a life lived that expresses true faith. So what love and service did the Samaritan show? Now I think when we take the time to reflect on it, we will see that this was not just doing someone a good turn. It was a great, great deal more than that. First of all, it says he saw the man. So his eyes were open to the needs of people around him. He wasn't preoccupied with himself. He noticed what was going on in other people's lives. Then it says he felt compassion for him. So his emotions were moved. He was sensitive in his heart to the needs of the other person to the extent that his emotions were involved. It says he took pity on him. In other words, he showed mercy and felt compassion. So he saw the man's needs, which were pretty obvious, but he didn't turn a blind eye as the priest and Levite had done. Then it says he went to the man. In other words, this is where he made the decision and took action. He went over to the man to see what his condition was. Then it says he bandaged his wounds. Now this suggests to me that the man was prepared for service. Where did he get the bandages? Well, he'd either brought them to use for wounded travellers or else he'd brought them for his own use. So he was resourced and ready and prepared for service. Then it says he bandaged up his wounds and this was an unpleasant task. There was blood everywhere, open gaping wounds from the man's beating. This was unpleasant. He obviously wasn't someone who fainted at the sight of blood, but it shows he was willing to do something unpleasant in order to serve this man. Then, of course, he sacrificed time, effort, money and resources. It says he poured oil and wine into the wounds. That was, of course, for cleansing and healing. He gave up the comfort and convenience of riding on his own donkey and put the man on the donkey and walked beside. So there was inconvenience. And then he took responsibility for the man. He accepted this as a divine calling placed on him. He didn't see the man as, a, as, an, as a, an interruption. He saw the man as placed here by divine providence and him coming along as God's appointed agent to help this poor man. He then thought about what would be best for the man. He didn't just leave him there. He thought, right, this man needs somewhere safe to stay. I'll take him to an inn. He gave some thought to what would be good for him. And then he inconvenienced himself on his journey because his plans were obviously now disrupted. He was delayed. Maybe he wasn't going to get to where he'd hoped to get to that evening, but he didn't mind. But the really big commitment was that he was willing to pay for this man's long-time care. He gave the innkeeper 
two silver coins, each one a day's wages, and said, look after him, and when I come back, we don't know how long that would be, I will pay you what you're owed. So he said, care for him until he's better, and I will cover the costs. That's amazing. The Samaritan did not ask if this man was a Jew, someone he was supposed to hate. He didn't stop to ask if the man had been foolish and come at a bad time. He disregarded the danger to himself on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. He didn't think, I'm going to be caught by robbers. I need to keep moving. He set aside all his concerns and his own agenda and put the other man first. So this was truly love without counting the cost. Maybe he had no original plans to return that way, but he now changed his plans to return that way in order to look after the man and pay the innkeeper. So he saw other people not as an interruption to his business, but he saw helping them as his business. His theology may have been suspect, that's why Jesus uses the Samaritan as an example, but God was in him and he was showing that he had eternal life in him, love for God and his neighbour. He was not a consumer of religion, but a purveyor of godly love. He was not an armchair theologian, but an active servant of God. So, this was someone who had eternal life, who was an example for this lawyer, that is, uh, someone who knew the Jewish traditions inside out. And Jesus was saying to this lawyer, Intellectual discussion and conviction are useless, and so the parable ends with the statement from Jesus, Go and do likewise. So acting out this kind of real love for neighbour is our calling, our mission, and our responsibility. And what a difference it would make to our world if we did that in the way Jesus calls us to. A great passage, and one well worth reflecting on.